Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Now, as ethical tech becomes everyone's responsibility, I'm beginning to notice more and more that consumers are forcing businesses to change. And they're doing that by driving sustainable and ethical tech solutions. And it almost feels like a kind of an eco-awakening that has created an appetite for ethically and sustainably sourced goods. And there's even a site called thegoodshoppingguide.com, which is an online tool that allows anyone to actually check the ethical ratings of the world's leading brands before they go ahead and purchase an item. So it's consumers that are undoubtedly driving the push for F for ethical tech solutions forward. And traditionally, it was accepted that tech giants such as Google and Facebook made their billions from a treasure trove of personal data that we give them without question. But we begin to see the emergence of new solutions, such as Ecosia, which is a non-profit search engine, which offers an alternative to big tech by planting 127 million trees across 30 different countries just using the profits from its search advertising. So when you're searching for crazy kitten videos and people falling down, trees get planted. So it's just this whole different mindset that I'm seeing. And and we did speak with Ecosia a few weeks ago, but another company appeared on my radar, set off my tech spidey sensors, and that company is called Data Solutions. And they are a specialist distributor of innovative IT and security solutions. But they announced a commitment to become the world's first carbon neutral IT distributor by 2022. And it really is a great story. So I encourage everyone to listen to this, especially if you're in the world of tech. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to Dublin. So we can speak with Michael O'Hara, Group Managing Director of Specialist IT Distributor Data Solutions, where we're going to talk about all this, techies go green and so much more. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Well, thank you, Neil, for inviting me onto your show. It, it, it's a pleasure for me. I'm Michael O'Hara. I'm Managing Director of Data Solutions, and we're a specialist IT distributor operating in the UK and Irish market. Uh, personally, uh, I'm an accountant by profession. Uh, I haven't qualified and, and worked in practice. Uh, you know, I soon realized that I preferred the draw of working in business I like the freedom of being my own boss and, uh, you know, to watch something grow uh, that you're involved in is is uh, very rewarding. And uh, I suppose working in IT, the, the one thing that's constant in IT is that it's it's always evolving. And that is, uh, uh, you know, it's, it, that's a, an enjoyable aspect uh, of the job as well. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And that freedom is so important, I think. And it's great to hear hear you talking to me in Ireland. I know there's a, a great thriving tech scene there at the moment, which I'd love to dig a little bit deeper on with you as well at some point. But for people that are listening to our conversation today, anywhere in the world, hearing about data solutions for the very first time, could you tell those listeners a little bit more about the kind of problems that you're solving for your customers with your technology? Yeah, uh, so uh, data solutions, um, we we're, we're, were established in 1991, so we're actually 30 years old, which makes me feel, feel like we're, we're dinosaurs in, in the IT sector. And uh, we entered into the UK market uh, in 2016 and have been growing exponentially uh, for the last five years, 30% growth per annum, which is uh, fantastic. Um, we have two, uh, what we call uh, pillars uh, in, in our business. Uh, one is uh, cloud and uh, digital workspace, and the other is IT security. And you know, we feel very confident that you know those those pillars w- will continue to grow strongly over the coming years. Um, data solutions, it's a it's a B two B business. Um, we sell through a channel of resellers. We're based throughout the the UK and Ireland, and we represent fourteen different vendors. We break those down kind of into into three categories. Uh, the first category are tier one vendors, uh, the likes of uh, Citrix, Checkpoint, HPE, Aruba. And um, when I'm describing data solutions, I, I say it's like 
uh, we're, we're, we represent, um, it's like having a franchise for Red Bull for the country. They, they're fantastic vendors. They're market leaders uh, in their own sectors. And, and we do like to pick the number one or number two market leader in the world. Uh, that just makes it easier for us to, to sell our technologies. Uh, the next sector are what we call our tier two vendors. They are, they're smaller uh, and they usually they complement our, our tier one vendors uh, and, and they operate in, in niches, uh, but they are, they are market leaders in, in the niche in which they operate. And then finally, uh, we have our up and coming vendors. These are guys with great new technology and uh, they, they want to go global and uh, we're helping them uh, do that in the UK and Irish market. And as we record the episode today, world leaders are gathering for the G7 summit here in the UK. And ethical tech is entering the mainstream now. There's a lot of talk about sustainability and how it's everyone's responsibility. And consumers, for the most part, seem to be forcing businesses to change by driving sustainable and ethical tech solutions. And the reason I bring this up is I recently read your commitment to becoming the world's first carbon neutral IT distributor by 2022. So can you tell me more about that story and, and the motivation behind the announcement? Yes, uh, world's first carbon neutral distributor. Uh, it, it sounds great, doesn't it? And uh, uh, for a small company like ourselves, uh, it's, it's actually isn't as uh, complicated to achieve. Um, um, and the story behind it, Neil, um, uh, every year after our financial year and in April, um, we uh, we pick a CSR project, and it's usually uh, you know it's a charity, a homeless charity, or, or you know for children's charity, and we support it for the year. And uh, so last April, last April 2020, we had just gone into lockdown. We experienced beautiful weather, and uh, you know everyone was getting out, getting close to nature, and uh, it was fantastic. And I suppose we all realized with the pandemic how fragile we are, but also how fragile the environment is. And the likes of Microsoft and Google had also come out with their sustainability targets. So we decided, you know, data solutions, we we'll pick sustainability as our CSR and corporate social responsibility. And um, so uh, when we started to look into it, we actually realized that this is much bigger than a CSR project. This is uh, an existential issue and we all of us have to play our part. So we decided that uh, as a business, we would become uh, carbon neutral and uh, sort of struggle to find, well, what, where do we start? Um, but uh, we soon realized that you start by measuring your carbon footprint and as the saying goes, what gets measured gets managed. And when you know where you're burning carbon within your business, you can then um, start uh, uh, addressing the different areas you, you're uh, burning the carbon and, um, and start your sustainability journey from there. So from a data solutions point of view, uh, some of the things we have done, we have um, removed our fossil fuel gas burning heating system and replaced it with a, a much more efficient electric heat pump, heat pump solution. We've installed car charging points within the office. Um, we've moved to a green electricity provider. And uh, by the end of the year, uh, all our uh, company vehicles will be electric. And uh, we'll, uh, when that happens, we will actually be carbon neutral uh, this year, uh, which is great. Uh, but it's it, it, it's not really enough, Neil, and yeah. uh, we recognise that. And we've gone a, a little bit further than that. Um, uh, we have um, removed all our and replaced all our lighting with LED lighting. We're moving our ERP solution and our corporate apps to the cloud, uh, where it's much more efficient. Um, we're all working from home pretty much at the moment. Um, but when we when it is safe to go back to the office, uh, we've got uh, we're bringing in a hybrid model um, where it's at least three days work from home. So that's uh, reducing our commute for employees by sixty percent. 
and having worked uh, remotely for the last 18 months nearly, um, we realise that we don't need to do as much business travel. And so we anticipate that um, our business travel will go down by 40%. And uh, we're, we're um, also embracing the, the circular economy with uh, recycling and reusing as much as possible. It's incredible to hear what you've achieved here and kudos to you. And like you said, there is still a lot of work that needs to be done. Mm. And before you came on the podcast today, for example, I was reading that the amount of e-waste gen- generated annually is now worth over $62.5 billion a year, which is is more more than the, the GDP of most nations, which is incredible. Mm. But things are improving. I have spoken to the guys at Ecosia recently, I don't know if you've seen them, but by switching your search engine, you can that they will uh, from the money they generate rather than try and sell you more things they go away and and plant trees so we can all make a difference and you also recently announced the results of a survey and i think it found that 57 percent of businesses are planning to become net carbon neutral but less than a quarter have actually written a company policy about it so can you tell me more about that who you surveyed and, and possibly share some insights from that survey Yes, uh, uh, we did that survey last March when we launched Techies Go Green. And uh, we wanted to get a starting point of where tech businesses uh, were uh, in terms of uh, sustainability. And, um, you know, 24% didn't have a written uh, company policy. But uh, also we found that 62% uh, were unsure how they could measure uh, their footprint or carbon neutrality. 41% felt there was a, a they had a lack of resources or capacity to do it. And 32% felt that um, they, would, they would have difficulty in getting buy-in uh, from, from the company. And, uh, but, you know, this all points to uh, a lack of understanding of what was what is needed, and it's totally understandable. I mean, a year ago we were in that position as well. Um, and uh, a further stat on it: eighty-one um, percent uh, appreciated that um, by not being carbon neutral had a negative impact on their reputation and could exclude them from future tenders. I think that kind of led to the fifty-seven percent, as you say, that were planning to become carbon neutral. And I can add that uh, we're just uh, uh, announcing a further survey three months on, Neil, and um, it, that 57% is now going up to 83% and they pl- that plan to be carbon neutral by 2025. So the awareness is building and, you know, I'd like to think that we're helping uh, uh, achieve that. And I'm curious, from the results in that survey, was there anything in there that surprised you at all? I was pleasantly surprised by the genuine interest uh, from from the businesses to do something here. You know, we're, as I say, we're 30 years in business and um, launched lots of technologies. And sometimes you get the, the glazed over eyes when you talk to someone about, you know, taking on a new vendor. But um, the genuine interest uh, that they wanted to get involved. And um, what I, I, I'd say as well, we're really only at the starting point here. With, with a few notable exceptions, I'd say nine out of 10 businesses are really just uh, starting their journey. And there is a huge education investment r- required to build the awareness uh, and the assistance to get the businesses um, carbon neutral and beyond. And, and something else that stood out to me before you came on the podcast was your Techies Go Green community, which I believe encourages and supports partners and other businesses in doing the exact same. So can, can you expand on that? Yeah, sure. Um, so look, at uh, sustainability is such an important topic. Uh, and um, as I said, uh, we feel that businesses don't know where to start, even though they want to. Uh, we also feel that you know, time is running out to fix this. Uh, this is my biggest con- biggest fear. Uh, you know, t- like 2030 is uh, less than 10 years away and there's so much to be done um, to avoid serious and, ir- you know, irreversible damage to the planet. Um, we, you know, we felt we could do more. I mentioned that we launched 
hundreds of different technologies down through the years. And launching Techies Go Green is the most important launch that we would ever do. Uh, it's a sustainability movement uh, which is centered around the tech industry and not just tech companies, but any business that kind of works uh, within the sector. You know, it could be a recruitment company or a legal firm or a currency firm. You know, climate change is, is not selective in who it hits. It hits everyone. And, and we're not going to be selective. If we can help any business uh, to become more sustainable, you know, we will. Um, we went live in March uh, and we set ourselves an initial target of hitting 100 corporate members uh, by uh, the end of June. Uh, we currently have 80 members and we will hit the 100 by the end of June, which is great. Uh, and, and we have two goals in, in, in Techies Go Green. The first one is to build awareness that we all need to change our behaviour to become more sustainable uh, for the sake of our children and for future uh, generations uh, you know we all need to get serious about protecting the planet as i said there's no point in us all working hard to maximize our salaries and our profits if we end up with a planet we can't live in and the second goal is is to take action uh, we invite all members to sign up to a three-year carbon pledge the pledge is not compulsory, um, uh, uh, but we, we want members uh, to at least try uh, and get started on the journey and you know do something. Uh, and the, uh, the idea is that each member will aim to have their business carbon neutral within three years. No mean feat, but very achievable for most businesses. Um, you know, the Techies Gold Green is about changing people's hearts and minds and, and, and thereby their behaviour, with the end result being that uh, we get a different result for, for, uh, from a sustainability point of view. And we will have people listening all over the world. Is Techies Go Green, is it, is it just the UK and Irish um, audience that you're serving there, or, or does it go beyond that? At the moment, it's focused on the UK and Ireland, but uh, we would absolutely be delighted to hear uh, from anyone, uh, wherever they are. As I say, if we can help anyone on their sustainability journey, uh, you know, uh, uh, that would be brilliant. Now, it has been challenging for businesses in the UK and Ireland with Brexit, followed by the pandemic, and we could almost dedicate an entire episode to that to those topics alone. But how has Data Solutions adapted throughout the pandemic while also supporting organisations along the way too? Is there any trends there that you've seen? Yeah, I mean, it definitely has been uh, challenging in, in many ways. Um, and uh, some sectors hit worse than others. You know, think of hospitality or retail and travel, for example. But in some ways, uh, uh, the IT sector has been a bit of a hero in terms of, you know, assisting businesses to continue trading by, you know, enabling staff to work from home uh, and, 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 you know, setting up the IT around that. Um, you know, I think the IT sector has fared pretty well over the last 18 months, all things considered. Um, no major issues around Brexit. Uh, you know, we're not seeing any major tailbacks uh, at ferry ports, and business continues pretty much as normal for for us. Uh, luckily enough, I, I think the big problem we face, and it's the same for for pretty much every business, is actually winning uh, new business. Um, you know, pre the pandemic, uh, we'd all be. Um, you know, we're out meeting existing and potential new partners. Uh, we'd be attending um, numerous events and trade shows. And all that's gone for the present. And uh, it's now uh, uh, gone online. And uh, it's, it's about getting your message uh, in front of that buyer uh, as he does his research online. And so the growth in inbound and outbound marketing um, uh, has been has been phenomenal in the in the last um, year or so. And where do you go from here? What's next for Data Solutions? I appreciate there's probably not too much you can share, but is there anything you can share about the road ahead and and what yeah. excites you? Yeah, well, yeah, financially, uh, our, our as the fellow says, our north star is to hit to a hundred million in in revenues. Uh, 
Last year, we we achieved 70 million uh, euros odd. And in the next uh, two financial years, we aim to uh, achieve uh, the 100 million. Um, as I say, uh, the IT sector is very buoyant. Uh, the two sectors we operate in um, uh, will continue to grow significantly. Uh, there are hundreds of new technologies being launched every year, and they'll want to enter uh, the UK and Irish market. It's a key market, rep- you know, represents about 8% of the global IT spend. The UK is the sixth biggest economy in the world, and these vendors want a distributor to help them uh, get established here uh, as quickly as possible. And we feel that uh, uh, we, c- we can uh, offer a really good service there. But it's not all. It's it's not all just about growth. Um, growth is important. It's why we go into business. And as I mentioned earlier, it's it's it feels very rewarding to build something from nothing and to to achieve you know hundred million hopefully. Um, however, you know growth gr- growth needs to be sustainable. I read somewhere uh, that in Ireland. Um, if every country in the world was like Ireland, uh, we would need the resources of over three planets, three planet Earth, uh, to meet our needs. And we just can't keep continuing to, to use um, the um, uh, Earth's resources uh, in that way. Um, and the answer is we need to, we need to develop a, a circular economy, you know, where we can continue to grow uh, and ideally everything that we, we use and sell it would be a hundred percent recyclable and reusable. Completely agree with you on that. And it's so refreshing to hear and seeing you put it into action as well and being the change that you want to see in the world. But before I let you go, I'm going to throw a slight curveball at you now because I always ask my guests if there was a particular song that has inspired them throughout their career, accompanied them on their journey or just helps them get their head in the zone before going on stage or going into a big meeting. Is there a particular song that's got a particular importance to you that you'd like to share with us? Yeah, so uh, um, thinking of a place by the war on drugs, and um, uh, it's it's a really beautiful song, um, and it's eleven minutes long, and I, I, I you know I listen to it uh, to kind of chill out. Um, the the vocals and 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 the reverb is is, is brilliant. Um, so yeah, I'd be delighted to have that added to to your playlist. Excellent. Well, I'll be adding that to the uh, playlist. Great choice as well, by the way. But before I do let you go, for anyone wanting to find out more information about uh, data solutions, the work that you're doing, uh, what's the best way of finding you online and contacting your team if they want to continue this conversation? Yeah, so you can find out more about data solutions on datasolutions.co.uk or datasolutions.ie. Uh, or you can contact us at info at datasolutions.ie. Uh, we'd be delighted to hear from you. Um, from uh, Techies Go Green, uh, we'd love to hear from you wherever you are. Um, as I say, we're looking for more corporate members. And, and we're just about to launch our individual membership for people who want to support sustainability in the tech sector, uh, but maybe they work for a company that. Uh, they can't influence to join Techies. We'd be delighted to have uh, you guys come and join Techies Go Green. And you go to techiesgogreen.com forward slash join us. Well, I'll add all those links to the show notes so people can find you nice and easily. And like I said at the very beginning, there is a huge focus on sustainability right now. Yes, at government level and businesses are starting to pick up. But it's customers, that are, for the most part, that are driving these changes as well. And I think if businesses don't start mending their old ways, then the customers are going to start going elsewhere. But I applaud you for not just talking about it, but for being the change you want to you want to see in the world and being the world's first carbon neutral IT distributor by 2022. And for that reason alone, I'd love to stay in touch with you, continue to support you on your journey. And if you've got anything to share about in the next uh, year or so, or even six months, I'd love to for you to come back on the show and give us an update but more than anything just thank you for sharing that story with me today you're very good neil and thank you very much it's been a pleasure 
Wow, what an incredible story. And as well as implementing measures to improve its own sustainability, I love how the organisation has also launched Techies Go Green and how that community encourages and supports partners and other businesses in doing the same as what they are. And also a big thank you to him for sharing insights into how businesses have adapted throughout the pandemic. And also, again, that word, supporting organisations so that they can do the same and offer similar mobility and security offerings. So if any of the words have resonated with you today, please, I urge you to contact Michael, all the guys at uh, Data Solutions and Techies Go Green. They'd love to hear from you. From the conversation we had outside of the recording, his passion for this topic is 100% authentic and genuine. And anything I can do to help support that, I'll gladly help out with. So we'll stay in touch with Michael, get him back on later in the year, see how things are going on that journey. But for anyone listening, if that stat in the survey, which found that was it over 80% in the end are planning to become net carbon neutral, but less than a quarter have written a, a company policy around it. If you're in a similar position, contact uh, the guys at Data Solutions or equally send a message to me, send your questions to me, pictures to come on the show, whatever it may be, email me, techblogwriter at outlook.com. My website is techblogwriter.co.uk, where you'll find over 1,600 episodes, along with the, the shows I do with Citrix and Netgear too. Maybe we can all be the change that we want to see in the world. And I was brought up in the 80s, so I'm allowed to make cheesy sentiments and before I walk off into the fake sunset. But a big thank you for listening. Come and join me again tomorrow. We'll do it all again. But until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.